guest uh, is a friend of mine from New York City. He's making his first appearance on this television program. He began reporting the weather on NBC's Today Show about a year ago, and uh, he joined that program after having performed the same duties for 12 years at uh, WRC-TV in Washington, D.C. Before that, he did it at North Hollywood High. Would you please welcome <laughs> Willard Scott. Hey. It's Willard. Willard Scott, ladies and gentlemen. What a guy, Willard Scott. Have a seat, Willard. I have one, thank you. <laughs> How are you? This is a thrill. And you talked about New York at the beginning of the program. Yeah. And I know you miss New York because you lived there for quite a while. Lived under you for a while. And they kid about the small got here in Los Angeles. I brought you some New York air, and I bottled this this morning. Here. Take oh, a look. boy. Mm, like sleeping under a bus, yes? <laughs> oh, Willard. Having worked in New York only for one year, here's your wallet. Oh, thank you, Griff. <laughs> Watch. Well, I, you know, these are things I thought I'd never see again. Well, and for those of you at home who think this is a high-class program, this is my first appearance, right? Yes, sir. Biggest moneymaker for all of NBC, right? This show. This show, right here, Johnny Carson's show. Okay, this is what they serve you for hors d'oeuvres back in the green room. Oh. Isn't that right? Oh. Mm. Delicious. You know, Willard, um... Uh, in all the time I've been uh, hosting this show as a substitute, you're the first person who's ever brought meat out here. <laughs> but nonetheless, a distinction. <laughs> How are things uh, on the Today Show, now that you got a mm. wad of spam in your mouth? <laughs> <laughs> That same spoon that you had in the soap opera. Yeah. Yeah. How is how is Jane? Uh, terrific. Is Polly? The loveliest lady in all of television. Mm -hmm. Really a beautiful lady. And uh, she, she, there's Jane nice. in the audience there saying she's a lovely lady. And uh, uh, Mr. Brokaw? Tom is meeting frequently with his contract manager. And Tom is with his agent, his analyst, his psychiatrist, his doctor. The free clinic, Tom is doing beautifully. Now, you, uh... <laughs> you, I guess you're out here to drop off some resumes, huh? Uh... <laughs> Every show's an audition, David. Don't forget it. Um, uh, you know, I was stunned. Not stunned. I mean, it's not like world famine, folks. But I was, uh, I was, I was interested in noting here that you've only been on the show a little over a year. Is that possible? Seems longer. No, it, no, I don't. I mean that as a compliment. You seem like yeah. an institution of the Today Show. Now, I understand that when you started, things were a little bit rocky. Yeah. Well, I was the first guy that they'd ever hired over 40. And uh, on the Today Show. And I mean, look at it this way. I'm bald-headed, I'm over 40, I have no talent, and I'm on Geritol, and I've been a hit. So, I mean, it's got everybody baffled in New York. They can't understand. But, but what kind of reaction did you get when... Uh, now, I know the people love you now, but what was it like when you first started? In the beginning, it was wild. I got the first one of the first fan letters that I got on the program after I'd been on for two months. It was a postcard, and it simply read, Good morning, Tom. Good morning, Jane. Good morning, Gene. Good morning, Willard. Goodbye today. Good morning, America. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> oh, heavens, not a confidence builder. Wasn't it? And another, I went on vacation. I came back. The card said, hope you enjoyed your vacation. We sure did. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. And, wait, there's more. Okay, in the band. I got a write-up in the New York Daily News from one of the biggest fans that I've ever had in the newspaper business. He said that Willard Scott is the kind of person that if he gets on an airplane, you hope he won't sit next to you. Now, that was a nice guy. <laughs> <laughs> but now you have overcome this sort of no, thing. No, it's still rotten no, press. There's no, no audience. The ratings are down. No, the Willard, no, 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 no. You No, that's, uh, none of that's true. And uh, we're going to uh, take a look at some of the things that the folks uh, send in. Is that correct? Yeah, I brought a few little goodies on the plane with me this morning. Okay. First of all, I want to We have this. to pause oh, for a know, uh, no, commercial no, message no, no. while Willard takes inventory. <laughs> Yeah, anything. Hi there, welcome back to the Tonight Show. Willard Scott is here. Uh, every morning uh, when you see Willard do the weather, he has uh, a memento that uh, someone has sent in from around the country. What have you here, Willard? Well, this is from the University of Arkansas, and you know they call... Mm -hmm. They call themselves the Razorbacks, mm -hmm. and uh, this is a hat that all the... Uh, Kids that go to school there wear this. Would you like to put this on right up? Yeah, I bet the parents are mighty proud of their kids, too, aren't they? There you go. Yeah. 
Can you imagine? Yeah, who says these kids today don't know what they're doing, huh? Can you imagine an RCA stockholder just tuning in as you put that hat on saying, oh, there goes the <laughs> No, hole. they'd like that. They'd say, now we got something. <laughs> All right, now. <laughs> these were sent to us, and uh, I don't really know quite what you do with these, uh, Dave, but you can figure it out after well, the show. I think these are doilies Take of some these... sort, or tea cozies, perhaps. <laughs> Hello, doily. Now, to show you what they think of you in New York at the network at the top, Fred Silverman spent the last six months knitting this for you. And if you'll help me hold this up, oh, sure. I'll show you what this is. Because this is really quite nice. Are you ready for this? Oh, this is lovely. Is that lovely? That's very nice, yeah. Huh? Well, this is... Uh... A woman, uh, I, I don't mean to, uh, a viewer knitted that, is yeah, that correct? Yeah, a lady That's in a Stewart, work. Florida knitted this for us. It's very nice. And it's that sort of thing. We got a 40-pound Maui fish sent frozen from Guam one day. Those are fun. Yeah, we had fun. We sent it to the cafeteria, and they made salad out of it. And or on a hot day, just sit on yeah. it. <laughs> That's yeah. what they did for three weeks. <laughs> and the whole company did the cha-cha-cha, the electric mambo. Now, <laughs> now uh, before you uh, got into weather, weren't you uh, a clown, Ronald McDonald? Yeah, I was the original Ronald McDonald. I uh, started, isn't that... Uh, you were just a baby. Before... Before Chicken McNuggets, I was Ronald McDonald. Now, now what, what were your responsibilities in those days? I was Richard Nixon for two years. I was Bozo the Clown for a year and a half. I did many jo different jobs in Washington. So, but, but, but as, as Ronald McDonald, now, back in those days, it was like over 100 sold. I remember it was not a, a big First thing. First sign, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, would you go out on public appearances and stuff? Yeah, I went out and sat on the top and fished for fish sandwiches on the top of McDonald's unit with a fishing rod. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, and then I, the greatest thing that I probably, in my whole career, I started early and peaked and should have quit when I was ahead. But I worked at WRC in Washington with Jimmy Henson, who later on did the Muppets, of course. Right. We had a show called Sam and Friend, and Jimmy had these Muppets, and he had this little green frog named Kermit. And Kermit, I was sort of the Fran Allison of the group, <laughs> and I fred, uh, fed Kermit Schindler's peanut butter. Kermit would open his little mouth, and I'd take a big wad of this local peanut butter and slap it in there, and Kermit would go, <laughs> and then disappear. Yeah. <laughs> and that was a hot act, believe me. That was early television, you so got to remember. Kermit goes back a few years then, doesn't he? Yeah, Kermit, I, about 53. Yeah, I was yeah. under the impression he was a, a newer, but he's been around for quite Sam a while. Sam was the bald-headed puppet, and he was the star of the show. Mm -hmm. and Sam never... Now, you know, Willard, you mentioned something earlier that I find difficult to believe. You said you're bald but you seem to have a healthy head of hair there. Yes, um, well, show business, it's we, amazing. We'll, uh, we have to do something, but we'll... <laughs>You never know who you're going to run into on the streets here. For instance, uh, you might run into Gregory Peck. You might possibly run into Richard Hare. I don't believe it. Hi, Willard. How I are you? I don't believe it. It's David Letterhead. Thank He's you. the idol of the... You're starting your new production win. Uh, February 1, but uh, before we get into that, I just uh, wanted to congratulate everybody affiliated uh, w with your show, the Today Show, for being on the air for 30 years. And I know that means a, a lot to everybody coming from a guy whose own show lasted 18 weeks. So uh, <laughs> uh, it's a commendable anniversary. I don't know of anybody in that room and anybody in the show business that hasn't had the same experience one way or the other, but we wish you the best. I happen to be your biggest fan at 260 pounds. Thank you very much, Willard, <laughs> and, and thanks for the opportunity of letting me get up at dawn. I appreciate that. I do a great watch this. And now, here's David. And we have your resume. Thank you. David Letterman with Willard Scott on January 14th, 1982, the 30th anniversary of the Today Show. Uh, my next guest uh, started his career at NBC in 1950 as a page at WRC in Washington. Now the weather reporter on the Today Show and just a fun guy to have around, please welcome Willard Scott. <laughs> Incredible. Thank you very much for being here, Willard. I would have been here earlier, but I, there's uh, all sorts of worm castings up in the green room. Oh, I, I had to get it off my shoe. Gotta... There's two piles of worm castings <laughs> right there. You... Got to watch your step. Huh? <laughs> that is a class act that you have on that show. I must say, that's worth studying. <laughs> <laughs> let, uh, let me get right to it now. Uh, you are a revered American television figure. Yes. Uh, but at one, at one point, is it true that you were Commander Retro? <laughs> I, I hate to admit to that, but that was probably the, the shortest-lived television show in the history of the world. It drew fewer people. There it is, Commander Retro. There he is. And, 
And that is the dear departed Basset Hound, Dr. Strange Dog, who was uh, very active in the show. And that show lasted six weeks. We showed old Buster Crab movies and Buck Rogers shorts. This is a weekly show, daily and show? Uh... It was on once a, once a week on Saturday yeah. morning. It yeah. had the lowest rating of any show in Washington. Now, and you were also um, Bozo, is this correct? I was Bozo. You know, they had Bozos in every major market. They have a couple here at NBC, they call them vice presidents. And one has 300 kidneys. And, and he's in the green room right now. But uh, the Bozo was a syndicated show that uh -huh. started out in California. A fellow named Larry Harmon, who used the old circus clown as yeah. a base. And then out, out of Bozo came Ronald McDonald. And you, uh, but you developed Ronald McDonald, didn't you? That's right. Where's my briefcase? It's funny you should mention now, that. Now, how does that happen? You were Bozo on TV. We didn't mention that. Look what I have here for you. I wanted you to have this as a token of my esteem. This, I don't think I can. This, this is the first Ronald McDonald suit that was the commercial suit. Now, the first original Ronald McDonald suit looked a lot different uh -huh. from this. Looks like you used some spotting on that one. Yes. <laughs> I took it over to Dirty Harry, and he said, no way would he touch this thing. Uh, but now tell me how you, from being Bozo to Ronald McDonald, and, and if you, in fact, created Ronald McDonald. Yeah. You get plenty of dough every time they move Oh, in you would be surprised how much. Have you ever worked with big corporations? Well, uh... <laughs> <laughs> It only hurts when I laugh. I'm a veteran, too, folks. I mean, over the years, I work with them. I, I, I work with the, with, the, with the bozo, the clown show, as I say, and out of that came Ronald McDonald. And it was one of those things where, you know, I was 23 years old. What did I know? You know, they said on the casting room couch, they said, sweetheart, baby, when, there's, when the thing goes national, you're going to be the national mm -hmm. Ronald. Don't worry about it. And I didn't. Yeah. And it did. Yeah. And I didn't. Well, but, but uh, I mean, now, in retrospect, you created uh, a yeah. highly identifiable uh, logo. Well, is that, I guess, oh, my there goodness. There you are. There's the family of clowns. That's Mary Clown over there on the uh, left. And that's little Sally Clown over there on the left, and little Mary, who's uh, 21 years old now. Now, this, this, is, this is you as the original Ronald McDonald. And there I am. That's Sally when she yeah. was about five. She didn't even like me then. I was, <laughs> she posed for that. And that was part of the original Ronald McDonald yeah. suit. But I loved it. And I had a great time. And it's, but, I, but, no, but, but the point here is, yeah. now, yeah. this, is, this is, identifies this man's burgers worldwide. You ought to be a, have yes. a piece of this action. Well, once in a while, they invite me over for a Big Mac attack. <laughs> I, I am, it, you know how things work in this business. You can't plan it. You well, know. I never was even close to something no, that big. No, That's I, incredible, Willard. I, I, I got, <laughs> uh, yes, I did. I was, yeah. It happened. But I'm going to go out there the 22nd to Chicago. They have a hamburger college out there, uh -huh. McDonald's. And I do love them very much. We had good relationship and they're going to give me an award and we're going to have all sorts of good times out there and you, you know we also we have much much more to talk with you about you you did other kids shows and yeah. other you were a local uh, fixture in uh, radio in washington yeah. for I still 20 look. 23 years you were on radio yeah there? that's right did the joy boys my old partner eddie walker and had breakfast with him this morning here in new york all right we're going to talk about this stuff yeah. and uh, much much more as they say when they're fooling uh, we'll be right back <laughs> Willard Scott is here, and we were discussing your earlier career, and you were, uh, for a long time, a kid show host. Did you like kids? Oh, yeah. I've always liked working. Yeah. You, you did weather. Did you ever do children's shows? Uh, sort of a, a kid show, yeah. But it really wasn't on TV. Yeah. Just something I had at the house. We... <laughs> <laughs> you mean with the movies in the basement? No, no, we no. We're just that kidding. Uh, now, but uh, we have some, we have some videotape or some old yeah. film of your highlights as a uh, kitty show. That won't host. take long if they're highlights of my career. Uh, do you want to tell them what we're going to see, Willard? Or I don't is it know. Self-explanatory. What is it? Let me see. All right, let's just roll it and surprise uh, Willard and Scott. Have. Watch the monitors here in the studio and at home. Run next door and use the neighbor's TV. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and something else pretty special too, Mouseketeers. We want to see you out at Glen Echo Amusement Park on Saturday, September the eighth, for Mickey. Mouse Club Day. The greatest Mouseketeer of them all will be there, Jimmy Dodd, and so will I. Hi. What's your name? Mitchell. Mitchell, you look out there so they can see you're pretty busy. Here, can you give me a squeak on the nose? You turn your head around, let me see your ponytail. You turn around like that. That a girl. she got a squeaky ponytail. Hi. What's your name? Oh. Oh, 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 oh. Willard Scott. Oh,
in your opinion, is Jimmy Dodd still the greatest Mouseketeer of them all? Oh, you know, he was the sweetest man. He was such he a sweet... He left us? Yes, he's, yeah. he's departed this world. But he was a very religious man, and he loved Walt Disney Productions mm -hmm. and worked with him for a long time. He was a gentle, gentle, kind soul. Yeah, yeah. Really and, and you and uh, the kids there uh, handling your face, uh, <laughs> you, you, didn't, you didn't mind that? Listen, that bought two houses and a Cadillac. I didn't mind that. <laughs> <laughs> and one lawsuit. Yeah. No, I... I had a horn. That was my act. Underneath the clown suit, I had a little bicycle horn, you know, taped <laughs> to my undershirt. And, you know, when I would squeak their nose like this, I'd go, uh -huh. and I'd hit the horn. Well, a kid is always looking at your eyes, you yeah. know, so you get the concentration. You were able to fool the oh, kids. Oh, even today. That's yeah. the same act I use here with the news department. Uh, <laughs> uh, does, does Bryant Gumbel ever reach over and squeeze your nose like that? No, but Jane Pauley did one. Hey, hold it here. Um... <laughs> And I loved it. Now, uh, uh, now, how? Now, Washington D.C. You, you had kids. We saw your family. Yeah. Now, there were sons and daughters of congressmen, senators, yeah. diplomats, people in all branches of the government. Uh, how did the kids react to having their dad being bozo? Well, I, I, you know. <laughs> <laughs> or, or is there any difference? Come to think of it. Well, I was going to say, <laughs> you could talk to any of the politicians' kids, and they could almost give you the same answer. I think. <laughs> in fact, that's the line I used in my speech. I said I had to give up the clown business because in Washington, the professionals ran me out of business. Yeah, yeah. During the Nixon years, I left town for three years. As a matter of fact, <laughs> but. Uh, no, they, they, my kids are pretty gregarious, yeah. and they got a big kid. The only thing, little Mary was a tall kid when she was about seven or eight, and they called her Big Bird, and that sort of called made her feel Called her Big Bird? Yeah. That's, yeah, that's She nasty. was seven three, though. I mean, you know, you can sort of understand. Oh, oh, Willard, what a cruel <laughs> thing to say. They've always loved it. They've gotten a big kick out of it. I don't think they've ever felt, you know. Now, how are things on the Today Show? You and Jane and, and uh, Bryant and uh, Chris all getting along well? Just like the, the Goldilocks and the Seven Dwarfs. That's right. We do our little thing. Now, here. people are always mailing you stuff in. Oh, yeah. Well, did you see this thing? Because this is classic. I got this from Oregon the other day. I was out in Medford, Oregon, KTVL, our good NBC station. They had a telethon. I worked out there. And some lady said she was going to send me a Blackberry Pie because they have beautiful... Blackberry. Blackberry Pie. Mm -hmm. So I want you to see what came to the mail just today. This is the Blackberry Pie that arrived this morning on the Today Show from Medford, Oregon. Take a oh, look at this. Oh, my. Is this, oh, isn't my. this nice? Huh? Isn't that terrific? And that's the way it arrived through the mail. <laughs> now... Uh... Would, uh, d would you eat this now? Are you going to eat no, this? No, it's somebody must have sat on it. I think. Oh yeah, the, uh, yeah, yeah. And you collect. You got a whole warehouse of this stuff now, don't you? Yeah. I got one more goodie. If we have. Do we have time for one more thing from Mr. Uh, Scott? I think. Move this it is right cute. along, Willard, this if you don't mind. All right, just a whole. Oh, this up is okay. cute. All aboard. Okay, that's thank you. Almost like the worm. Who's got the close-up shot of this? This is a work of art. Right over here, Willard. This is an arts and crafts. See this. Good old days in Avon, Ohio, I think uh -huh. this was. Now, this, of course, is what they call an outhouse, for those of you who are uh, living on the 80th floor of a penthouse. Now, see, there's the inside. There's a little roll, a miniature roll. And here, look at this. Instant. There is a little Sears catalog. <laughs> <laughs> very nice. Isn't that good? Willard Scott, ladies and gentlemen. You know him, you love him. Thank you very much, Willard, for being here. Kevin Nealon will be here. <laughs> Uh, dear Dave, letter number five begins. Are we doing five tonight? I like to hear my name on TV, so you know what I did? I wrote a letter to Willard Scott saying I was 99 years old. <laughs> and he wished me a happy birthday. The funny thing is that I'm only 22. Ha, ha, ha. Sincerely, Kevin Mocker, taught in Massachusetts. Well, Kevin, we certainly appreciate your sharing your accomplishment with us. Uh, of course, it's not for me to judge you, but here with an official response is the Today Show's beloved weatherman, Willard Scott. Listen, you little punk. You think you pulled a fast one on the National Broadcasting Company, huh? <laughs> well, you think again. We know your name. We know your address. We know where you live. You little lowlife. We know everything about you. We know what you're trying to do. So don't try to pull that again. See? Personally, I'll come up and kick your from one end of this country to the other. You'll be lucky to see 22. Thank you, Dave. Willard thinks he's Hulk Hogan. Letter number four. Dear Dave, we're planning to drive down to Florida for a spring break, but we're a little short of gas funds, so we need a third guy. Dave, please come with us, or we'll end up with someone like Willard Scott. 
Uh, this comes to us from Chris and Jim, Chicago Heights, Illinois. Someone like uh, Willard Scott. Well, Chris and Jim, if by someone like Willard Scott you mean a man who always wears a smile, whether the day is sunny or dark with clouds, if by someone like Willard Scott you mean a man who always has a kind word for a local parade or a senior citizen celebrating a birthday, if by someone like Willard Scott you mean a man who would gladly don a silly hat just to lift the hearts of a few lonely viewers, well, well, yes, then, Jim and Scott, I would be proud to go on a trip with someone like Willard Scott. Paul, you, you'd want to go on a trip with Willard Scott, wouldn't you? Oh, gee, no, I... I wouldn't, no. Yeah, me either. Come to think of it, what the hell was I... <laughs> You're talking about the weather the whole time. Big fat no, guy in the back he... of your car talking about the weather. <laughs> Who's kidding who with that yeah, stuff? Yeah. Uh, letter number two. Dear Dave, I am confused. Why does Willard Scott have hair one day and the next day none at all? <laughs> Excellent question. Perplexed in Norman, uh, Michael Bottoms, Norman, Oklahoma. Well, uh, Michael, I have a visual aid here that I think should clear things up. Willard has hair, I believe now, depending on whether or not Gene Shallot needs his mustache for the day. There's the uh, visual aid. There's Willard without hair. And, of course, you see then uh, Gene with his mustache. Now, if, if, if Gene's not working, then the mustache comes off and Willard gets the use of the hair for that day. That's pretty much how that goes there. <laughs> Letter number one. Dear Dave, if a fight broke out on the set of the Today Show between Willard Scott and Dr. Art Uline, who do you think would win? G good letter. Uh, yours in perplexity, Michael Wazanen, uh, Omaha, Nebraska. Uh, Nebraska. Uh, let's see, Michael. If Willard Scott and Dr. Art Uline had a fight, who would win? Why, you, the home viewer. That's who. <laughs> <laughs> a smattering of applause. <laughs> This is the longest show of my life. Uh, I listen to this one for hours every weekend. This is Sound Effects number one. Good to see you, Dave. You, you just dropped in to mention your book, I guess. No, I wouldn't be as crass as that. I was over Channel 4 next door doing right. some stuff with Al Roker, one of the great weathermen of all time. Right. But I want to wish you happy holidays. You're a wonderful guy. Thanks. And listen, this is for your mother. It's a book called America's My Neighborhood. America is My Neighborhood. It's the best Christmas present you can buy for right. under $20. And here's a couple of copies for the guys in the yeah, band, Greg too, Alman because the they're there. terrific. Thank Thanks a lot. Well, hey, happy It's crazy. It's just, we've just, we've lost our minds. It's crazy. <laughs> that, well, that, that won't do. Uh, and now, ladies and gentlemen, oh, this is very exciting. It's another uh, brand new segment for the show. We actually tried this a couple of months ago and didn't have too much luck, but tonight, ladies and gentlemen, we're uh, going to do for you Dave's Carpet Samples. Paul? Absolutely. A little something we call Dave's, Dave's Carpet Samples. Dave's Carpet Samples. It's a real deep pile of fun. He's got the plushest box of stuff. He's going to share it with everyone. Thank you very much, Paul. And here, as you can see, we, we have the uh, a complete bag. Oh, oh, damn. Oh, no. Paul, do you have a, uh, like a Kleenex or something? Uh, I something don't have quick, because this stuff is, oh my God, it's hot coffee. Uh, I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll be right back. Paul, do something, I'll be right back. Excuse me, I'm sorry, this happened last time. We had some kind of a mix-up with uh, Dave's carpet samples. I'll be right back, Branford. Don't worry about it. This won't cut into your time.
Okay, great. Oh, all right, I got it right here. Oh, I'm exhausted. Let me just clean it up a little bit. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, like this is worse than the leeches. Okay, there, that seems to have taken care of it. Ah, did it ever. And now, oh, oh no, we don't have no time for Dave's carpet samples? Okay, we'll uh, do a commercial. We'll be right back with Mickey Mantle. Yesterday, a 14-year-old youngster was arrested for carrying a loaded weapon here into a Manhattan junior high school. And I'm telling you something, ladies and gentlemen. New York City school teachers are getting sick and tired of always having to say, did you bring enough ammunition for everybody? Because if you didn't, then we're going to have to send you home and... Huh? Hey, hey, hey. What's up? Biff Henderson, look, it's our, uh, one of our students. You know, we're, we're, I, we're doing a show now. But I'm just curious about sure, one thing. Could, could you tell me what the weather's going to be like tomorrow? Weather tomorrow? Yeah. Well, I think it's going to be pretty nice, because today was lovely. And uh, I think tomorrow they're probably about the same. So it'd be mild, sunny, mild, clear skies, sunny. highs in the mid to upper 40s, chance of <laughs> probability of precipitation less than 20%, I would say. <laughs> now, on the weekend, we may get some shower oh. activity. But for tomorrow, it's going to be solid gold. Money I, in the bank. I can't write this fast. Wait a minute. <laughs> Hold on. All right. All right. Up in the middle 40s. Sunny, mild, middle to upper 40s. Lovely day. Okay. All okay. right. I'll Great. just... All Thank you. Right. Sure, Biff. All right. All right. It's, it's going to be mild, sunny, and clear skies. Comedy. Up, up in the middle 40s. It's going to be lovely. Thank you very much. Okay. okay. I, I don't know much about Willard, but I do know where he's not going. He's not going to have a drink with Bryant. So I think that's... <laughs> Thanks, Biff. Anytime, Dave. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Letter number two. Uh, hey, Dave, have you ever thought about going over Niagara Falls in a barrel? Craig Scooby Bellavo, Burlington, Ontario. Uh, no, uh, Craig Scooby Bellavo. I've never... <laughs> but here, I did this one summer on vacation. I, uh, I rode around Mount Rushmore on Willard Scott. There, see? There you go. There you go. I actually heard a guy make this noise, yee just a few minutes ago. Okay. Howard, that's our director, Howard Gurney. Howard! Howdy. Hal. <laughs> Hal, um, oh man, was it a beautiful day today. Oh man. Oh geez, it, it was a little humid, but sunny. In fact, Hal, why don't you, why don't you open the big sunroof there and sure. let a little, yeah, because it's kind of close here. There it is, the big, uh, Late night sunroof being open. All right, just open that right up, and it was the only problem is a little muggy today. But boy, look at that beautiful azure skies, and some white puffy clouds, very nice. Okay, let's just now get on with it. What the Hi, hell? Hi, Dave. Hi, everybody. Boy, it's a beautiful day. May not be suitable for younger viewers. <laughs> Thank you for the warning. <laughs> yeah, that giant Willard. Okay. Our next guest has been uh, the weather boy for the Today Show since 1980. 
And uh, Thursday, he will be uh, co-hosting the annual Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome America's favorite son, Willard Scott. <laughs> Willard, the you, know, best of the business. you know what I like about you, Willard? You have more energy than any ten people I know. Well, you know, I travel all over the country. I go to these different towns. I eat all this nice food. By the way, here's a Slim Fast candy bar, which will guarantee you to lose weight in no time at all. And speaking of that, one of the quickest ways... <laughs> Would you like the crew here? Oh, look at it! I do. I want you to know that I really enjoy being on this show because I, you and I, my neighbor, most people don't know that. That's right. I lived beneath, no, I lived above you. You were beneath me. And you had those wild Tupperware parties. I remember with a dog, that crazy dog used to, oh, you could hear him going across the floor. But in those days, I wore hair. And you know, on television, sometimes I wear hair and sometimes take I don't. Take it off, Willard. Come on, take it off. Go nuts, Willard. Take it off. Take it off. Go. Right. Ah. Yes. Place. This is a very sacred moment here. I'm, I, I majored in religion in college, and I can't resist you. Dear Lord, bless this misshapen head for what it is. I want to show you the only transplant that really works. This 21-year-old man who is short of hormones, watch what happens with a $400 hairpiece. I ask you... Let's see that guy again. Let's see that. Let's see. That, that, that looks great. Yeah, have a shot. <laughs> you know, actually, he looks. He looks terrific in that. And you, you know, you look kind of like I don't know. I yeah, naked. Like, no, know, but he looks with that thing. This. He looks like a million damn dollars Wait, with that hairpiece. You know who I want? You changed that guy's life. I wanted to give Paul a twenty-year uh, job. Over there. And if Danny DeVito had been here, he would have been a perfect kid. <laughs> hey, Willard, how you doing? I'm great. Tell, tell me what happened this morning. You're doing the weather, and some kind of an animal goes nuts, and what happens? Well, you did the weather in yeah, Indianapolis. Not, not like you, though. No. no. <laughs> Fortunately, that's my day job. Did anybody happen to see the show this morning? One of the highlights of my career. Thank you. <laughs> we <laughs> so, folks, we've already given out the hairpiece. You don't have to lie. Yeah, yeah. Larry Tisch has said, they'll never come in this theater again. <laughs> now, on the show this morning, they sent me out because they, they, they walked the camels from the Christmas show. That's right, the big Radio City uh, Christmas spectacular. Right, they walked the camels around to give them some exercise. Mm -hmm. So they had the camels uh, out front for me to, you know, to talk to and play with and have some fun. So I walked out, <laughs> and there was one camel who was really very ambitious, uh -huh. and the camel <laughs> went nuts. I mean, the camel went absolutely crazy. And coming from you, that's something. Well, well that's a crazy camel, babe. <laughs> he ate my flower. He stuck his head down here and ate the entire flower. And at that point, I had a cup of coffee. He drank the coffee, and then he said, bring me female camel. I'd I've never heard a camel talk. <laughs> Willard, uh, let's, let's go back. I think, I think everybody knows by yeah. now that you started in broadcasting the way a lot of folks did, right. doing like a kid show. Right. And, and you were a clown. You were originally... Was Bozo. It, Bozo. Right. And you were also Ronald McDonald Ronald for a while. Ronald McDonald. Yeah, could... Which came first, the Bozo or the Ronald? Well, actually, there's a very romantic story there because Ronald McDonald was sort of born out of Bozo. I was the second or third... <laughs> It's like that movie Junior or something. <laughs> I was going to say, I, yeah. I learned a lot watching the show in the green room. Actually, the camel did it. If you watch the movie All Junior. All right, Willard. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> now, when, when I did Bozo, I think I was the third or fourth Bozo. Larry Harmon was the guy that created the character. And I, was, I did the kid's show for maybe three or four years. Yeah. And it's the greatest... 
Look at that. How old were you there? Oh, there is. Oh, my. How old were you? Just a kid, aren't you? Oh, I was uh, 28 years old, and that's little Mary, our daughter, Very cute. who oh, lives really? in California. Is that your daughter? That's little Mary. Oh, she was sweet. just a little over a year right mm -hmm. there. And that was the last Bozo show. And you got the same hair. That's the same hair. <laughs> Will, Willard, Notice stay, stay right there. Stay right there. We got to do us a commercial. We'll is, be right back. Is this right? it? No, no, ready? no. Just relax. We'll be right back, folks. Of course, wearing, wearing his sandals with the socks. Always a sign of a mighty, mighty hip guy. Well, that's old money. You know, <laughs> only old money wears stuff like this. Sadly, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to go. My thanks to Vince Gill. Vince, great to have you here. Thank Please you. come back. Have a great Thanksgiving. My thanks also to Willard Scott. Same to you, Willard. Have fun with the parade. And, of course, Danny DeVito. Tomorrow, ladies and gentlemen, Helen Hunt, Kendall Box, and Jeffrey DeLuca, and also my thanks to the New York Jets. We'll see you folks tomorrow night. Bye-bye, everybody. At 100 years of age, our next guest is America's oldest living Boy Scout. It's our pleasure to have him here tonight. Please say hello to George Freestone. Hi, George. Uh -huh. Good to have you here. Thank you for being here. I must say, uh, you look terrific, and I guess you feel pretty good, don't you? When did you turn 100? Two days ago. Well, congratulations. Happy birthday. Were you excited? Is that special for you? It's got to be very special, well, I would think. Well, for 100, <coughs> I thought it was kind of special. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering if I'd ever make it. Mm -hmm. did, you, did you celebrate in an unusual way? Did you... Yeah, they had a big party there. Strippers? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's a quite a big bunch there. About, uh, yeah. I'd say seven, 800. Yeah, you live in uh, Arizona, where you spend most in of your Tempe. life? Mm -hmm. Tempe. Right now. Now, you know, it's, uh, uh, forgive me here for being uh, clumsy about some of this, but it's, uh, uh, it's inconceivable, unfathomable, as you go through your daily life, to think in terms of, well, here's a man who was born not, not in the 1900s at all. You were born... 18, 1898. 1898. And we're very close now to a whole nother century. So you, right. you could be involved of three centuries of life on this planet. Uh, it could be. <laughs> 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 so, 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 so. Do you have, uh, is there anything you have done uh, in your lifetime that are you aware of? You know, do you, I, I want to, you know, do you, do you drink? Do you smoke? Are there, do you, do you exercise? How do you, do you have an explanation for how you've lived to be 100? I never drank or smoke, no. And I exercised and I, I did a lot of hard work. Right. That don't hurt you. No, hard work's good for you, isn't it? Good for you. What kind of work did you do mostly? <clears throat> well, farm work, mm -hmm. a lot of it. All right. But I raised on a farm. Yeah. You, uh, you were born before there was flight. Is that right? Oh yes, yes. See, isn't that isn't that just? It's just it's hard to get a hold of that, you know, because for uh, those of us who are a bit younger, it's been a fact of our daily life. Oh yes. Yeah. And you also, uh, when you were a younger fellow, met uh, Thomas Edison. That's right. Yeah. How? Yeah. Where did where did you meet Thomas Edison? He came to uh, high school with me. We was going uh, to us. Uh, in California, mm -hmm. I was going to high school, and he came into the school there and, and talked with us. Right, met him. How did how did he seem to you? He, he seemed kind of old. <laughs> <laughs> At that time. Well, now, where in, in Thomas Edison's life? What was this? Was this uh, was this after the incandescent light bulb? Was it? I mean, no. Uh, <clears throat> yes, it was after, but Thomas uh, Edison talked to us a little about that, and he said that after he had made a thousand 
experiments trying to get it to blow, grow, blow uh, to burn. Why well, the fellow working with him said, well, we just won't give up. But Tom said, no. He said, we know a thousand ways where it won't work. Now right. we're going to make it work. Right. So he kept going. It, it, you know, it's, it's just amazing. I'm sitting here. I shook your hand. Did you shake Thomas Edison's That's hand? That's right. Well, to me, this is a huge thrill, not only to shake your hand, but to yeah. just have that sort of... Uh, connection, relationship yeah. to this sort of history. It's yeah, just unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. And now let's talk about your affiliation with the Boy Scouts. Now, you're not still a Boy Scout, are you? Well, I still work with them. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You were a Boy Scout when you were a kid. That's right. Uh, that's how how uh, many years were you a Boy Scout? I was at three, three years when I started. Well, what, kind of, what kind of things were, I'm sorry, what year was it? Nin 1910. 1910. Yes. Yes. Uh, and what kind of things were the Boy Scouts doing in 1910? Well, uh, they um, they dressed a little different at that time. We had to have suits, leggings, just uh -huh. about like a soldier. Right. And we trained. Uh, we done walking training, and uh, we went out uh, scouting. We'd go out, and they'd have a, somebody, a scout, run out and. We'd try to find him, you know. And if you couldn't find him, ah. uh, uh, and 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 you're still active with the scouts today, obviously. Yes. And I know you and you you and your wife have a, a project that I think is is uh, doubly meaningful uh, because of the significance it represents, and also coming from. Uh, a man who was a scout and, uh, and is now 100 years old. What is this? This is obviously an eagle, and you give it to Eagle Scouts, right? That's right. Mm -hmm. My wife, <clears throat> wife has a little ceramic shop, and she molds these eagles, and uh, I paint them. Mm -hmm. I, do, I do all the painting on them, and right. then they're fired. And then you sell them to the kids? Just give them. <laughs> <laughs> but they have, they have to earn, they have to earn their eagles. That's very nice, very thoughtful. And, and again, I, I guess that it means a little something special, a little something extra coming from I you. I think so. We, yeah. we usually put their names on, uh, right, on the bottom, bottom of it right. here, you know. Now, uh, I know that uh, you had a desire, kind of a wish for your 100th birthday, and it, d it didn't come to pass. So tell the folks what that was going to be. Uh, I can't remember. <laughs> the, to the Today Show, Willard oh, Scott? Oh, yes. Yeah. I, I had uh, hoped that I would have come in the Willard Scott show. But yeah, that, that's because yeah. Willard Scott, all his life, if we, we know three things about Willard, he's, he's fat, <laughs> he, he wears a hairpiece, or sometimes doesn't wear a hairpiece, and he, he wishes people happy birthday. Yeah, yeah now, and, and they did not wish he, you a happy did birthday? They did not wish me a happy yeah. birthday. Well, uh, I want to tell you something right here, George. I make dreams come true. <laughs> On the line, right here, from his home, today's show weatherman. I don't know if he still works there or not. Willard Scott. <laughs> Willard, how are you? Hey, Dave, how are you? I'm pretty good. Guess, Willard, guess who I have sitting right here next to me? Oh, yeah? Who was that? Uh, a man by the name of George Freestone. Uh, two days ago, he turned 100 years of age, and one of the things he was hoping for was for you, Willard, you, <laughs> you punk. <laughs> Those are his words, not mine. <laughs> he, he was hoping for you to wish him a happy birthday. Would you mind correcting this oversight for us now? I'll take care of it right now. And let me tell you, George has got a beautiful hairpiece. Ask him where he got his. I need a new one. <laughs> <laughs> hey, George, yeah. you yeah. are truly a good-looking man. <laughs> we would have sent you 25 pints of Smucker's Strawberry Jam as soon as it goes up. <laughs> And J George Freestone of my favorite city in the world, Tempe, Arizona, oldest living Boy Scout. Happy birthday from all of us here on the David Letterman Show. Well, thank you. <laughs> That's pretty good, huh? Thank you, Willard. Have a nice weekend. Thank I you, appreciate Dave. your help. Bye bye. Happy birthday. Thank you. <laughs> Sure, easy to do on the phone. Couldn't do it two days ago on his own show. <laughs> it's, you know, uh, it's, uh, it's thrilling uh, meeting you. Two, two wonderful things have happened to me here tonight. Uh, meeting you and the other one was, you know, Jamie Lee Curtis. With us. <laughs> and I understand you have your driver's license. You still drive? Yes. Whoa, Nelly. <laughs>
<laughs> well, it's a pleasure to meet you. It's a great honor. It's a great thrill. Thank you, George. George Freestone. I'm going to tell you something. Meeting uh, George Freestone, I believe, is just about the nicest thing that has happened to me this year. He's a terrific guy, yeah, isn't he? Nice. All right. Have a great weekend, ladies and gentlemen. We'll see you Monday. Good night, everybody. Good night.